guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review for the Season 1 finale of Stargirl, so that's Episode 13, titled Stars and Stripe, Part 2. So this is the finale of Season 1 of Stargirl, it's gone very fast. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to keep up with all the videos. To be honest, really busy, was trying to catch up, and I've caught up for the finale so I could do a episode review for you guys. I'll talk about season 2 and I plan to watch season 2 week by week so don't worry about that, that's going to be coming. A lot of you have been requesting Stargirl videos and I really enjoyed making them at the start of the season, I just got very very busy and I got behind quite frankly. Anyway so I caught up and I watched the finale, episode 13 was amazing so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so yeah, the finale was amazing, I loved it, so much happened, there was so much. My notes are so long, because there were so many different details that happened, and there was like five endings to the episode, or maybe even more than that, and there's a lot that was set up for season two. So, you know, there's a lot to go through, and I really loved it. I thought it was a very fitting ending to season one. The finale was great. Okay, so what happened in this episode? So we're going to go through it chronologically. So at the start of the episode, we have the Blue Valley High School field, like, splitting open, and a satellite comes out of the ground. So Project New America is officially a go, and this satellite just, you know, completely comes out of nowhere. They're all just in the field. There's a little fight, and then, you know, the principal dies actually, so that's kind of a bit crazy. So basically all the adults, you know, are frozen in the whole town. Like so the whole of Blue Valley and this is shown when Icicle walks through the streets and talks to a little girl explaining what's happened and you know the fact that everyone is gonna be different once this is done, but they will be fine unless people resist. So that's what Gambler says, if people resist they will start to die and that's when you see the principal die later in the episode because he is trying to resist. And so Pat goes and beats the ISA's control over him because obviously he's an adult and he mainly does this through the help of Courtney who's able to get Pat through it and you get this very nice moment where, you know, she basically calls him her proper dad and basically this was a nice sort of emotional run through throughout this episode and it ends in a very nice way with those two characters. So yeah, he beats the control of the ISA. Okay, so then we go to the ISA headquarters and you have the JSA versus the ISA and it's just like the first JSA versus ISA fight in episode 1, which I will still say to this day is the best scene in all of Stargirl. That opening fight scene is just amazing. So this was great and I loved how it sort of replicated this and you know the ISA members were like, oh, you know, we're going to kill another Justice Society right now. So anyway, this fight ensues it's great it's really well made and there is so much happening so i wrote down notes for all of it and i had to double check a few times like did i miss anything because like i said this episode is ram packed full of stuff so one big thing that happens shiv kills dragon king that was completely unexpected he was fighting the shining knight and he was you know about to kill him essentially and then you suddenly see the dragon king like freeze and there is like a dagger in him and they're like, oh, what is happening? And he just falls to the ground. Dragon King is dead. That was completely unexpected. I did not expect that at all. So that was a great moment. Also during the fight, you have Stripe versus Grundy. That was, you know, this kind of big CGI fight. It was pretty good. I mean, the CGI wasn't the best and it's not the best on Grundy, but I mean, it does what it needs to do. And there was a few good Grundy moments later with our man. I thought Owlman was really, really good in this episode. You know, I think the fact that he didn't have his mask or anything, kind of got to see his face whilst he was fighting, I thought that was effective and I really liked it. So Grundy versus him, he actually spares Solomon Grundy, which is a very, very good move, I think. I think this was the right move to make and, you know, I was very happy in the end and, you know, because Grundy isn't fighting back and he basically feels some sort of remorse for Grundy. And so, yeah, you had this great moment with Owlman later with Grundy towards the end of the fight. Okay, so the ISA basically get their ass kicked, as you can tell, throughout this whole fight. You have Wildcat, okay, Yolanda, and she goes and she sees Henry. So she 
saw Henry die, but then, you know, Henry is alive, but it's actually Henry's dad, Brainwave, pretending to be him, so basically what happens, completely out of nowhere, completely unexpected, like Dragon King's death, he actually gets killed, she slices his throat, she completely just like, rips open his throat, and I was like, what just happened, like, this is crazy, and this is ruthless, and I loved it, I thought that was a great moment, and this is definitely going to be a new point of confliction in her character, you can see that later when she's at the, you know, filled with everyone else towards the end of the episode, she's definitely conflicted, and also it's just kind of, you know, crazy that she just stopped our man from killing, she just convinced him not to do it, and he spared Grundy, but she didn't even hold back at all, she just straight up killed brainwave anyway so we move over we go to the gambler and he convinces icicle to go to the office where courtney's mom is and to get her but also to stop dr midnight which is obviously with beth and you know the goggles are destroyed by icicle and this is a big moment for beth because this has you know been her whole thing this season i don't know what she's going to do next season maybe there's going to be some sort of change to her character unless they fix the goggles but yeah, so Chuck is killed essentially, you know, he's destroyed by a school. And so yeah, big moment for Beth that's gonna continue into season two. Alright, so then we go on to the final fight of the episode. You've got Stargirl versus Icicle on the top of the roof. And so you have Pat confronting Icicle, confronting Jordan, and Icicle's like, you know, you got no powers, what are you doing up here? Like you're not in your machine, you're not in stripe, like what are you doing? But then he's like, no, I'm here with my daughter. And then, there you go. You got Stargirl versus Icicle. Icicle sort of ices up for the last time. And you have this fight on the roof. Barbara nearly falls off the roof. She's saved by Pat. Icicle falls to the ground. Stargirl falls. But then she's saved by Wildcat. And then a completely unexpected thing happens. Mike drives Justin's car. And freaking runs over Icicle. And he shatters. He gets killed by Mike in a car so that was kind of crazy unexpected again lots of unexpected moments i thought that was a nice fitting way for him to go out he falls off and he gets killed by an even younger kid anyway so that was really good then we go over we've got justin the shining knight he is leaving and he's looking for the seven soldiers maybe i think he'll come back in season two with them and i would be very down to see that i think that'll be very cool so i look forward to seeing him return with the seven soldiers potentially and now we move on to the endings the cliffhangers of the episode there is like five cliffhangers and we've got a few other things to talk about before we end this video so the first cliffhanger is in the isa headquarters and it's after a report so pat says you know they always make up stuff to excuse what's happened you know especially in blue valley this time so they make it up that it's an earthquake you see this report and next to the tv screen at the isa headquarters you see someone with a hat so it's at this point that the camera pans in to the picture on the isa wall to the shade and the shade is back guys the shade is returning possibly the main villain for season two i'm really excited obviously we've had a version of the shade on our dc tv shows before on the flash but this is a different version i'm especially looking forward to him because i'm a big fan of the shade i really like him in the comics and you know i think he's got a lot to explore so that will be great and i think the isa is probably going to be around in season two still but in a different form with the shade probably leading the team so he basically is like oh you know poor jordan like you failed but i'll do better and so yeah it was amazing seeing the shade and you get to see his sort of I don't know what it's called, like, you know, his powers, the way he can move around through shadows and stuff, and, you know, you get to see him on the wall, and it's just really cool. So that was a great cliffhanger to the episode. Alright, so let's move over to the other cliffhanger. Shiv is in, you know, the storage room. Seems like this is a place where the wizard storage was, and so she finds the Heart of Darkness, which is from Eclipso. So Eclipso in the comics, and I'm gonna give you a brief overview, and before season two, I recommend that you read some of the comic books to do with him and to do with Darkseid, because they are linked, and so basically Eclipso is one of the original spirit of God's wrath, so he became an agent of chaos, he has the Heart of Darkness, which Shiv is shown finding in this episode, 
So this was mined from Apocalypse, it's a black diamond and it was used as a weapon to anyone who opposed Darkseid. And so I think what could happen, and what happened in the comics is, Eclipso at one point he possesses several heroes and he uses them to try and destroy the earth, but you know, at one point he's linked with Starman, Starman makes a sacrifice and you know, the way the end of the episode sort of happened, of, you know, Stargirl Season 1. There is a link here between the two of them, so I think they are setting up something to do with them. I think our heroes may get possessed at some point. But anyway, yeah, so she found the Heart of Darkness, which was, you know, possessed by Eclipso. And so, yeah, that is all you kind of need to know as a basis for who Eclipso is. I don't think he's the most known character, but he's a very cool character, and I can't wait to maybe see him in season 2 or at least see Shiv with the Heart of Darkness and it definitely should link to Starman but they might switch it so it links to Stargirl so we'll have to wait and see but anyway so also another cliffhanger well not a cliffhanger but just a nice moment towards the end of the episode we have Courtney and Pat they're flying around they go to this place and it's just a nice sort of father daughter moment where you know it's just a sweet moment just like the other sort of ending to the episode regarding them when you have Courtney and Pat and they are a proper family essentially she gives him you know her father's original mug that she was supposed to give to him all those many years ago and she gave it to Pat her proper father so yeah that was just a really nice moment nice last few moments and cool endings with Stargo and Pat and so the final cliffhanger and maybe the biggest cliffhanger Apart from the other cliffhangers which were big, like the Shade and the Heart of Darkness, they are very very big so I'm not excluding them, but this was completely unexpected. Someone is looking for Pat Dugan, someone in California where Pat used to live, and who is this person? This is Sylvester. Starman is back. What the hell is happening? How the hell is he alive? I have no idea. I'm so intrigued, is this the real Starman, is this a fake Starman, like what is happening here? I don't know right now, I need to think about it a bit more, maybe I'll do a video on this in the next like week or so, because I want to talk about Stargo and these endings were super intriguing, there is a lot left open for season 2, talking about stuff left open for season 2, we still have the ISA members that are alive, that weren't shown as dead in the episode, and these people are. Sportsmaster and Tigress, they got knocked out in the fight and we never found out what happened to them so I'm presuming they're alive because they weren't shown as being dead like cut in the throat or stabbed like Dragon King or Brainwave or being run over by a car like Icicle and so those two are still there, they're obviously a tag team so you kind of get them all together and then also you got the Gambler who deletes the system and he just walks out the room, so he's still around, I'm definitely presuming he's gonna come back, and also Grundy was spared in the episode, so he's gonna be here, he's gonna be, you know, I guess causing some havoc, although it seemed like he sort of had a change of heart, but he's still bad after all, he is Solomon Grundy. Also, I don't know, she's not a member of the ISA, but Shiv is still around. She found the Heart of Darkness, so I'm presuming she's going to be like a fully-fledged villain next season. But yeah, so a lot of stuff went down in this episode, and it was really good. Let me know, what did you think of this episode? Did you like Stargirl Season 1? Do you want to see more Stargirl videos as we head towards Season 2? I'll be sure to make more videos about the endings and what may be set up for Season 2, because there is still a lot of stuff to talk about. So thank you guys so much much watching and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.